In this episode, I'm going to show you how to design your own custom miniature bases. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. I'm DM Jim, and in this episode, I am going to show you how to make miniature bases, like this one, right here. And the reason for this is I got an email from a viewer who asked me if I could provide a tutorial using Tinkercad to make miniatures, bases, like this one. And I thought, that's not a bad idea. Now, you know, usually these aren't too expensive. I buy these uh, off of eBay. Uh, usually, I think it's 10, 10 of them for about 5 or $6. And they're really nice. They're made of resin um, right here. Very strong. They, they take paint primer very well, and then I dry brush them and, and use them. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, here's, um, here's one right here. This is one of my Frostgrave miniatures on one that I did. You know, they're very nice. The detail work is, is great. But it, uh, the email got me thinking that, yeah, there's got to be a way to recreate that uh, in Tinkercad. And then if you have a 3D printer, you can print them out. Or if you don't have a 3D printer, you can use one of those online print services like shapeways.com or i.materialize.com. Those are two that I have used. Uh, there are plenty more, but I, I mention those quite frequently in videos because I've used them and, and I like their the quality of their stuff. So what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to show you uh, how I made my own bases in Tinkercad. Here's an example of mine. Now, I glued a zombie on this one. Can you see the, the cobblestone right there? It's round. The, the, the black primer got down in the grooves there, and then I dry brushed the cobblestone. And, you know, this works just fine. I can't even estimate the cost of this. The length of filament that fed into the 3D printer to make this little base was so short. Um, we're talking pennies or maybe a fraction of a penny. I, I, I've, got to cons I've got to consult some 3D printer uh, fans to figure out how you, how you estimate the uh, cost. But I can tell you right now, I could print these. Each one takes about mm, 15 to 25 minutes, depending on the detail work, how fine of a, of a print level you want to do. My printer can do, you know, uh, down to 0 0.05 millimeter. You know, when you're printing at that level, it, it extends the length of the print quite a bit. So something that might take 15 minutes on what they call draft level, which is 0 0.25 or 0 0.2 uh, millimeters, that can take 15 minutes. You know, the 0.1 can take 45 minutes. So it just depends on what what you want. If you use one of those services like Shapeways or iDot Materialize, they can handle real fine resolution. So you shouldn't have to worry about you know speed or detail. But I'm pretty happy with it, considering that this might have cost me a penny to make, and now my zombie has a nice, uh, you know, really cobblestone detailed stand to sit on. I'm very happy with it. Let me show you another one. I just finished painting this one. It's not quite done yet. Uh, this one has a magic rune in it. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. There we go. It has a magic rune cut into it. The red is very dark, but in, real, in person it's very bright. You just can't really see that. I actually painted this red first and then I wiped off the top layer uh, leaving the red in the deep in the deep grooves there and then I painted it uh, black and then dry brushed it gray I'll take some photos of this I think the photos will show you a bit more detail this one turned out really well I am very pleased with this um, you can totally make something like this I'm going to show you uh, coming up just in a minute I'm going to show you a tutorial in Tinkercad I will show you what I click and select and things like that I'm going to show you how to take textures Textures you draw, textures you get off the internet from images.google.com. Uh, if you have a texture that you like, brick, herringbone, whatever, and if you have a texture you maybe drew by hand, if you can take a photo of it, it can be converted to what's called an SVG file, which can be imported into Tinkercad and converted into a texture that can be applied to a solid object like one of these base miniatures. Let's get to it. I'm going to show you how I do it in Tinkercad, and then after that, I'll show you some of the examples that I have printed out. Hi, everybody. This is uh, DM Jim, and I want to show you how you can make your own miniature bases in Tinkercad and then print them out on a 3D printer. What you're looking at here are, let's see, 10 miniature bases that I've 
created um, and two blanks. You can see the blanks right here and here are the other miniature bases. And so I'm going to make these available for download. You'll be able to find some details below in the description about where you can download these. But in this, uh, in this tutorial, what I want to show is I want to show you how you can do this yourself. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make an easy one, like this one right here, where it's just got some tile lines in it. And then I'm going to show you how to make one a little more complicated. You can notice I've got some different herringbone and brick cobblestone, different stone patterns here. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make these, but let's start by actually making a blank first. Now I could go ahead and use this, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new design. And first thing you need to know in Tinkercad is it always gives it a weird funny name up here. You just click it and you can name it anything you want. I'm going to call this new mini base. And you can make square bases, you can make circular bases, whatever you want. I want to make a base that has a taper. It's wider on the bottom and a smaller diameter on the top surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find the paraboloid, if I can find it. Where is it? Here it is, paraboloid. I'm going to drag it out here. And I'm, I'm working in millimeters. So what I'm going to do first is I am going to cut, I'm going to size this to 32. I hold the shift key down and drag on one of these and it, it keeps the dimensions the same. So there we go, 32 by 32. Now I want to chop part of this egg off so I'm going to, I'm going to import a box. Notice that it's opaque, you can kind of see through it. This is called a whole object right here, whole. And you can make a whole object just by dragging a solid out and then clicking whole and it'll do the exact same thing. So I have this whole object here, and I want to make it bigger than the egg, so 40 ought to do it. I want the height of the base to be roughly, I don't know, 10, 10 millimeters. Let's just play with it. I'll raise this up, and you can kind of see there's a shadow here. See where the line is? It kind of shows you um, where the cut is going to be made when I, uh, when I mold these two together or group these two together. So right now it's at four millimeters. It, as you go up, it counts five. It tends too much. So let's go down and let's do let's just do four. Actually, let's do five. Five millimeters. Then what I do is I drag this over and I cover the entire part of the paraboloid. You can see it's all the way around. Then I select both objects and I group them. And what the whole object does is it just cuts off the top, leaving me with this base, as you can see right here. It's five millimeters tall. 30, 32 millimeters in diameter. And that's going to be the base that we start out with. Now, let's make a let's make a very simple tile pattern. And to do that, I'm going to drag a box out here again. And I'm going to make it very thin. And you don't want to make it too thin because a 3D printer, you know, if you make it too thin, it won't be able to, depending on the resolution of your printer, it's not going to be able to, to get the real super detail. So let's leave a big enough line. I'm going to say two millimeters like that. And if you have a very fine 3D printer that can go down to like 0.05 millimeter, which some can, mine can, you can go thinner with this. But you want to leave enough gap so that when you base this or prime it, that, for example, if you prime it in black, you want it to get down in the grooves. Because what we're making now is we're going to make those grooves. Make it longer than the 32 millimeters. So here you can see that I've got this. It's, uh, let's see, how tall, how wide is this? I can't even, it's so thin I can't even select it. There we go. It's 83 millimeters long. So if I drag it over, you can see it's plenty long enough to cover it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make, I'm going to Command C, Command V, or Control V if you're a Windows user. And I'm just going to uh, make a bunch of these. I'm just going to paste a bunch out here. And then I'm going to rotate some. I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees. Let's see, right there. I'll rotate this one. I'll, I'll rotate this one too, 90 degrees. And what we're doing now is we're just going to start placing these where we think they would look good. And you can see the shadow. Look down here. You see the shadow on the actual 3D, the uh, solid object, the base. And you can kind of see where the tiles are going to going to be placed. So I'm going to do this one there. I'm going to take this one over here and put it maybe right there. Now, if you want to see what this looks like so far, all you have to do is 
group the tiles together. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to click all these thin tiles and I'm going to group them so they treat as one object. Okay. Then when it's selected, I'm going to use this little tiny cone right here to raise them up. And I just want to raise them up enough so they cut into the base. And if you, if I want to zoom in here and you can see, see how the shadow is down in it, maybe about a millimeter or so. That's good enough. Now what I do is I zoom out, I, I select all of it, the solid and the whole uh, thin slices, and I group them. And what's left is, if I zoom in here, is this channel. See that? That's going to be where the tiles are. Now, if I want to add more, I can just do a control V, paste another one, I can rotate it. And maybe I want to put this one right, right there. And remember, I need to raise it up again. right there I group it and you can keep adding these as needed you know that that looks pretty good I, I would be satisfied with that uh, if you're looking at giving it a stone texture on here that's a little more advanced and I am going to try to create a tutorial on on actually adding texture to the surface when this is printed this is going to be a totally flat surface with these grooves now, to add texture, you could you could use glue or putty or whatever you want to do. But again, when this prints out, it's going to be a totally smooth flat surface. Now, let's create a little more advanced one. I'm going to I'm going to copy this and paste it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup and I'm going to delete all of these uh, all of these slices so that I have a clean clean one again. And when I'm doing these in bulk, what I do is I make a copy and I usually put it out here off the grid. And, I, and that just reminds me that this is my master. I don't want to delete it. So I just make copies of it and then paste new ones and work on them. So how would you add something a little more complicated? All right, well, let me show you. First thing I do is I go out to Google Images and let's do cobblestone texture. And you, what you're looking for is a black and white. Now you can use these color ones, but it doesn't do so well when you get into the next tool I'm going to show you, which is this thing called Online Converter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the word sketch here, and that usually will thin it out. There we go. That gives me some actual sketches. So let's take a look and see if we find one that we like. Um, some of these have watermarks on them, which is not a big deal. You can, you know, as long as you're not selling these, feel free to, you know, copy and use what you can. I'm going to go, let's see what this one looks like. I like this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screen capture of just a section of this, like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this online converter tool. And Tinkercad can only import SVG images. So I'm going to go on the Image Converter, and I'm going to select this Convert to SVG. And I'm going to browse to that screenshot that I just did, which is the cobblestone right here. And I'm going to select Monochrome and Convert File. When it's done, it's going to save it to whatever location you specify. I'm just going to save it to my, I'm going to save it to my uh, downloads right up here. Okay, it's called Screenshot 2017 109. Okay, uh, I am going to go back into Tinkercad and I'm going to go over to this Import button, and I say Choose a File. I'm going to go to my downloads right here, and I'm going to organize them by date, and there it is, right there. Okay, I import it in. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because usually these are pretty good size. And depending on the complexity of the object you're importing, it could take a few seconds, it could take up to a minute. Usually it takes about 20 or 30 seconds. So let's give it a little bit more time. There we go. All right, now it looks kind of weird, doesn't it? That's because this online convert tool, any black or colored space, it creates as a solid. The negative, the white is negative space, like these gaps right here. And we're going to use that to our advantage. First thing we need to do is shrink this down. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hold the shift key because I want the dimensions to be kept the same. And I'm going to drag one of these corners down. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. And I want to put it over my blank tile here. Okay. And 
I can keep shrinking this a little more. You don't want to shrink it too much because then it, it won't fit, it won't cover the surface. It's got to be where it can cover this, the top surface of your, um, of your blank here. So there we go. I'm going to do that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it again. I'm going to turn it into a whole object. All right. And then I want to raise it up right here using that little cone. I'm going to raise it up. And let's see, is it cutting into it? Uh, just a little bit. Okay, let's see. I can um, I can play around with this one if I'm not happy with the depth of the cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the blank and the cobblestone pattern, and I'm going to group them. And when I turn off the thing, there we go. We're left with this nice cut pattern that when it prints, you see these gaps. The black paint or whatever you prime will get down in there, and then when you dry brush the surface, you'll have this nice cobblestone pattern left over. Very simple to do. You can make these all day. Just keep going and going and going. I'm going to go back to my original uh, collection here and show you some close-ups of what I've done. All right, and here we go. Let me center on one of these. All right, so uh, here's a stone pattern I made, very similar to the one I just showed you. Here's a cobblestone, a brick. Here's a brick pattern that's, that's sort of you know, asymmetrical. Uh, here's one similar to the line one I did. Now you'll notice the line, the gap is very thin. That's because my printer can do that level of detail. You'll have to experiment with these and find out what your 3D printer can handle. If you were going to outsource the printing of these to a service like Shapeways or i.materialize.com, they can do the real fine detail, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's see what else. I did this one. I got a magic rune and I turned it negative and I merged it and so you can kind of see that it's it's a big circle and I've only got part of it here on this blank. You can see the star here and some little uh, symbols and things like that. And I'm going to show you a picture in just a moment of how I painted this. I actually painted the deep recesses or the recesses red and then I hand painted around them black and it gave it this really very bright red uh, emblem or a rune cut into the into the piece. This one right here I have not managed to it prints well but it doesn't paint well so I'm probably gonna tinker with it and try a few different things. This one right here is just like this tile one but I made a set of two steps as you can see right here. So if you glued a miniature on here you know you'd want to paint these with a gray making you know like steps coming down. And that's it. Here's a, a checkerboard pattern. You could paint it. You could paint the grooves black, and then you know paint a gray over, or you could do a you know a white red, white red, or a blue white, blue white. This one could be done really, really well. And then this herringbone is interesting too. I've got one of those I'm printing right now that I'm going to be playing with. But again, I'll make these available to you for download. But you should experiment. Uh, Tinkercad is free. You can create you a free account. It's very easy to learn. And as you saw, it's very easy to make a blank like this, or you could use one of my blanks right here, and then import texture from, from, an, from an image, use the online convert tool to change it over to an SVG file, and then go back to Tinkercad and import that SVG, turn it into a whole object, and then merge it with your blank to get these um, surfaces here. So I hope, uh, I hope you like this, and I hope my instructions weren't too fast or too complicated. If you have any questions, do post them below, and I'll do my best to answer them. But I do love Tinkercad for one simple reason. It's just so easy to use. Uh, you can create very complex things like these. Just, you know, I didn't have to draw these stones by hand. I just went out and grabbed an image, imported it, uh, turned it into a whole object, and did a merge or a group and I, I was left with these, uh, these great mini bases that I can print up right here. So anyway, I would love to see what you come up with. Uh, make some square bases, make some oval, uh, whatever, whatever shape you want. Start your base and then merge some, some uh, patterns with it and see what you can come up with. But if you do any, I'd love to see it. Uh, post a link in the comments below and uh, share what you're making and uh, have fun with this. And that's it. That's how you can create your own custom miniature bases using Tinkercad and a 3D printer. Now, there are other applications beside Tinkercad that you can do this. One of the ones I'm learning right now and trying to teach myself is called Fusion 360. It is also from AutoCAD. 
AutoCAD owns Tinkercad, by the way. It is a free, very advanced CAD application that is, again, free for hobbyists. You're not supposed to use it if you're you know, making money with it or whatever. But if you're a hobbyist and you want to tinker with something a little more advanced than Tinkercad, check out Fusion 360, and I'll put a link in the description below. I have been printing these bases like crazy. And uh, again, here's the, you know, here's the one with the zombie, little uh, cobblestone. Here's a wizard, uh, red wizard of Thay, and I put him on the, the one with the red uh, rune on it. I just like that one. Um, here is an unpainted step. Now, well, let me see if I can get that one to you. Unpainted step right there. I've got to, uh, I'm probably gonna texture this one with some putty or something. The, the big flat parts look very science fiction-y, uh, not fantasy. So I need them to be a little rougher, maybe stone or something. So I'm gonna probably add some putty to those. Here, I've dry brushed this one. This one is a science fiction one. It's supposed to look like metal plating. And you know, what I wanted to show you was here is the one I buy, here is the one I made. You know, they're, they're, there's definitely a quality difference. The ones that are done in resin, the, they have the rocky surface and you know, the, they just, they look a little more polished. But you know, these are about, you know, 60, 70 cents a piece. These are, you know, a penny or two a piece. And you can print these as many as you want. Once you've designed, you know, one like, you know, the zombie cobblestone one here, I could print these all day. I could print, uh, these print very quickly. Uh, I print them not at the super fine level, but right between the draft and the super fine. It takes about 20 minutes to print one, but my 3D printer can print about 12 at a time. I set it printing and I go away, come back uh, three or four hours later and I've got a dozen of these ready to go. All I've got to do is be painted. So it's a great way to, um, to make your own miniature bases, especially if you've got an idea in your mind for a base that you just can't find for sale out there. You know, the people that sell these, um, you know, they have to come up with a design that, you know, is sort of generic to the various genres of gaming. So if you've got something in your mind, you're probably going to, that you can't find, you're gonna to have to come up with it on your own, design it and 3D print it. But with Tinkercad and a 3D printer, you can totally do it. So anyway, thanks again for your, for, uh, your attention. I hope you liked these. Um, I really hope you'll take a stab at making your own. Find someone who has a 3D printer if you don't, or use one of those 3D printing services and get, uh, get to making your own bases. This is DM Jim, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey everybody, DM Jim here again. I forgot to mention, <laughs> the miniature bases that I made, I am gonna make available for free but I'm doing it through a different route. My friend Tom over at Fat Dragon Games, he is hosting a Kickstarter right now for Dragonlock 3. These are 3D printed terrain pieces that he creates and sells. Um, he sells them, but he also raise, does Kickstarter to raise the initial funds. His stuff is outstanding, and I own a lot of it, and I've printed a lot of it, and it's what I use to make these dice trays, for example. These are half walls, half inch, uh, or you know, half height walls. There's the, uh, the Tomb of Horrors demon face right there. Um, here's another one I made for my son. This one has a working door. Uh, you know, these are the kinds of things you can make uh, with a 3D printer and some terrain tiles. Anyway, Tom is hosting my miniature files over on his site. I thought it would be a great way to send him some new traffic, maybe people who haven't heard of Fat Dragon Games. Now you can go over there and you can check out what he's doing. His stuff is phenomenal. You've just got to check it out. Now, if you're a big fan of like Open Forge, you know, the open source uh, terrain pieces, not a big deal. Uh, just recently, Tom and some of the community people worked to get a converter piece that will allow you to merge or connect Fat Dragon pieces with Open Forge pieces. I think that's the right name. So there's no reason, you know, not to integrate some of the Fat Dragon uh, terrain into your builds if you're an Open Forge user, and vice versa, guys. If you're if you're a big fan of Tom's and you like his stuff, be sure to go out to Thingiverse and look at the Open Forge because there's a lot of creative stuff out there that can integrate well with the Fat Dragon stuff. Anyway, just wanted to add that. Apologies for the last minute ad. FatDragonGames.com, thank you very much for hosting my miniature basis files, and I'll see you in the next episode.